I'm the worst YouTuber ever. I really was supposed to do an outfit change. You need to stare into the souls of your audience. All right guys, so in today's video, I'm gonna be telling you how I grew my YouTube channel and I'm gonna give you some tips on how to grow your YouTube channel in 2021. I don't know how to word this. I've been like really nervous to film this video because I'm not like the biggest YouTuber ever, but I constantly get asked, how did you grow your channel? How did you grow your Instagram? How do you make money on social media? This is my full-time job and I only have about 7K on YouTube and 35K on Instagram. But before I get into it, I would love for you to give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification bell for videos three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 6 p.m. Eastern time. Head over to my Instagram so you can see some nice creative looks. Join my IG fam and let's get into this video. All right, so I have like a bunch of notes on my phone because I have so many things to say and I just wanted to make sure that I didn't forget anything. This is all stuff that I learned by, by the way, by myself, either researching it myself, I've seen it on other YouTube videos or I had to learn it on my own. The first thing I really wanna talk about is to make sure you're doing videos that you're really passionate about. You can really tell a person's into their content by the way they act in their videos. They obviously seem more engaged in their videos and they like you can tell that they have a deep passion for what they're talking about don't just do a video just because you want to do it just because you want to make it go viral just because other people are doing it do a video because you want to do it make content make your niche something that you're actually passionate about. I'm passionate about makeup, so obviously that's why my channel is all about makeup. You do have to follow a trend sometimes, but honestly, just stick to the videos that you're completely passionate about because otherwise people will see right through you. Number two, you need to be yourself. You need to show your personality. Oh my gosh, if I, I should do a reacting to my first video on YouTube. It is just really cringy. I have a bunch of videos that I put on private. Yeah, I was sitting there talking to the camera like, hi guys so in today's video i'm gonna show you how to do this like nobody's gonna watch that honestly you need to like really show your personality and i'm still working on that that's something that i still struggle with sometimes because sitting in front of a camera is weird oh yeah that's my next point number three is to look at the actual lens of your camera don't look at the viewfinder you need to stare into the souls of your audience so that like people actually find you engaging they need to look into your eyeballs and you need to look into their souls so that's what you need to do i've seen so many people do videos where they're looking at their viewfinder they're looking like to the side and you could tell that they're looking at their viewfinder i don't have a viewfinder on this camera but i do have a monitor obviously you want a monitor or whatever works for you whatever your setup is so you can see if you're like still recording if you're still in frame all that but you need to make sure you're looking at the camera it's like i cannot watch a video where someone's just talking to the side honestly i'm guilty of this too don't get me wrong but it may I, like i look back on the footage and i'm like I look so vain. It's like I'm staring at myself, you know? Like, why am I looking at myself? People will subscribe to you if they really think that they can relate to you and they think that you're fun and, like, they there's something about your videos that, like, entices them. For number four, I have post consistently but quality over quantity. So what I mean by that is, honestly, try to have a posting schedule. I've really, really failed at this. Like, in all the years I've been on YouTube, honestly, by the way, I've been on YouTube for so long. I just took so many breaks, like, year-long breaks, six-month breaks, a few-month breaks. Like, I was never consistent until 2019 and that's when i started like growing consistently because i posted at least once a week in 2019 and 2020 it's still really slow growth you just really need to be patient but anyway i just really think consistency is very important i would recommend trying to have an upload schedule like i am trying my best to upload monday wednesday and friday so far in 2021 we're good i mean it's only the second week but still we're, we're good we're doing this but yeah don't sacrifice the quality of your videos for how many videos you post like you don't want to post five bad quality videos in a row like no one's gonna watch your videos and then you're not gonna grow so you want to post really really good quality content but consistently if that means once a week you get a really nice nicely filmed video then yeah just once a week if you could do it twice a week even better i would say try to post as often as possible that's the only way you're gonna see growth and i have something toward the end that i'm gonna talk about that's gonna help you maybe a little bit more with that that brings me into my next point which is point number five have good lighting it doesn't have to be like fancy ring lights fancy soft boxes or anything like that you could use normal daylight like it doesn't have to be fancy things i don't have a window right now so i have to use i have a ring light two soft boxes on the side i have a ring light behind, not a ring light um a bulb behind me just to like make the wall seem more white i don't know make sure your setup is really really good you don't need a fancy setup you don't need fancy equipment you don't even need a fancy camera iphone quality is amazing nowadays you can use your iphone your smartphone whatever you need but honestly just make sure it's good and it's not too cluttered make sure your background is whatever you i prefer the white wall i've made polls on instagram a lot of people prefer the white wall some people prefer the lifestyle background but people in the at the end of the day they're going to subscribe to you and because they connect with you on a personal level whether that's through your personal 
personality, but I definitely think lighting plays a huge part in that because the first thing people see is your setup, is your lighting, is the sound quality good also, by the way. So if that means you need to get a microphone, then maybe that's a little investment you need to make, but sound quality and lighting are really important. It's the first thing people see in here, so that might make them want to click off your video. Next, we have thumbnails. Thumbnails are so important because those are the first things people see when they're going to click on your video. You want to make sure it's eye-catching. I can do a whole video on how I make my thumbnails if that's something you're interested in seeing. I would also make sure that they're consistent throughout all your videos. You don't want them to look different in every video because it's kind of like your branding. People will see a thumbnail and say, oh, that's hers. Yes, I know who that is. You want to make sure you use maybe the same fonts and everything. That also brings me to the next thing, which is have a nice banner on your channel, like your channel art, because when people find you, they're going to go to your channel and they're going to try to see what else you're all about. They want to see all the nice thumbnails, by the way, that I just talked about. They also want to see your banner. Make sure your banner has like your other social media handles if it fits. Make sure it's not too clutter. I do make banners for people and if you're interested then let me know because I'm pretty reasonable at my rates for banners. We're at number nine, utilize what YouTube offers. So you wanna put in end screens, cards, tags. This is really important. So I'm getting into like the nitty gritty right now because number 10 is SEO. SEO is so, so, so important. That's part of the description. But before I get into SEO, like I was saying, you wanna make sure you utilize everything YouTube offers. You wanna put an end screen in and that, that's all in editing. You can put it in the end screen um, so that people have something to click on when, you're when they're done watching your video so they can click on another video. You also wanna put cards throughout your video. So if uh, you're talking about another video, like I referenced the video in the middle of this video, I would put it up in the cards so that people, if they're interested, can go click on it. So you want to make sure that you, they have that option because the more time people spend on your channel The better like the algorithm will be for you like YouTube will push your content out Okay, and part of number nine when I wrote it down was also use all the characters for tags So there's this place where you could put tags in and it's gonna be what pops up in search So that's SEO search engine optimization So for example for this video what I would put for my tags is how to grow on YouTube 2021 how to grow on YouTube. You wanna make it specific so that people like, know if they're specifically looking for something, they can find you. I'm not sure what else I would put for this. To be honest, this is a horrible example because I'm not to do some research. This is something that I research for every video. I spend like an hour researching what tags to put. But you wanna fill up all the characters. Sometimes I go to people like smaller creators and I'm clicking on their video and I see that they only have a few tags on their videos. You wanna use all the characters. I think it's 300 no it's 500 it's 500 characters that you could use you also want to put some of those in your description box as hashtags because that'll help them also rank in the search seo is so important i can do a whole other video dedicated to seo i also recommend tubebuddy tubebuddy is really really helpful because it helps you optimize your seo as much as possible so that you can be found in search okay so the next point is something that apparently hasn't been proven by research on YouTube's end, but I've seen it in my own analytics and that's finding the right time to post. I find that if I post in the morning, I literally get like 10 views. It's really important to post at the right time. You can actually go into your analytics and find the time that your audience is most active. For me, that's 12 p.m. Eastern and honestly, I've tried posting at that time and I don't get that many views. I have found that 6 p.m. Eastern works the best and that's me trial and error for years trying to figure out the right time to post. I used to post at 10 a.m. And that brings me to my next point, by the way, looking at your analytics. Like there's so many things you could look at in your analytics to help you better your content. For me, audience retention used to be an issue. I used to try to find the drop off point. Like when people would click away from my video, what was I doing in that particular part of my video that made them want to go away? And then I try to change that. I try to make my videos as eye catching as possible, like within the video, like I add graphics, I add text, I add things so that people are not just staring at me talking, but you can find so many things within your analytics that can help you better your content. And post Posting premieres is so important because again, you get to interact with your audience. It makes you more of a person so that people can actually see you're human and not just a video that they're watching, right? What I recommend doing for premieres is posting it, if you can, a day before you want it to like publish. It'll show up on your actual YouTube page, on your YouTube channel, and people can see it. They'll actually get into their subscription boxes too. And then it'll, it'll say premieres at so-and-so time, so-and-so day, so that they remember and they can actually set a notification. Cross-promoting, so have a Twitter and Instagram associated 
with your YouTube, I would recommend keeping your personal one away from, that's at least me, that's what I did. I definitely recommend doing that so that you can go ahead and promote your, I've always put like my thumbnail and I put a swipe up link on my stories on Instagram. I also post it on Twitter. It is so important, that way you get a ton of people watching your premiere. This is something I learned recently and this is how I got to 7K just before the new year. I was so happy and that's commenting on every single YouTube video you watch. Like if you're just, if you're looking up how to make bread it's not even in your niche just comment on there someone might find and they might see your profile picture and oh this girl does makeup let me see what she's all about and subscribe to you because you never know who's looking up how to make bread but and at the same time you want to also comment on people within your niche like the other day i commented on one of juicy jazz's videos and i swear i got like 20 subscribers from that video what i do is i set notifications for all the youtubers i watch to be honest that are like my holy grail people if that makes any sense so that i can be one one of the first to comment on their video because people will see me in a bunch of comments in a bunch of these youtubers videos and then they'll be like oh i've seen her before let me go see what she's about so that's what you want to do just comment on every single video you watch it's really really important honestly and it doesn't even have to be within your niche but also within your niche also it doesn't matter how big of a following they have but honestly you have more of a chance if they're like smaller. So I comment on everybody, it doesn't matter. Like I comment if they have a million subscribers, I comment if they have 20,000, if they have 5,000, if they have 1,000, I don't care. That way more, the more people see you in people's comments, the more likely you'll have subscribers coming to you. This next one's also really important. That's interact with your audience in any way possible. Respond to every single comment you get. Like there's nothing, I hate more than taking my time to comment on somebody's video and they don't even respond or they just heart it. Harding it, okay, yeah, that's fine. But you want to make somebody's day by actually re replying. Even if it's just like a heart or something, it doesn't matter what it is as long as you're just commenting something. I reply to every single comment and I just think that that keeps my audience engaged a lot more too. This next one might contradict something I said earlier, which was talking about making videos that you're passionate about, but also making videos about trending topics is super important. For example, when I got the iPhone 12, really when I got the iPhone, what was the one before? For this one anyway i did a video the day it launched i put it up and i got right now i think i'm sitting at 50,000 views that's my highest viewed video it's not even in my niche obviously but i really wanted to make a video on it it was a trending topic and it helped me get a ton of subscribers a ton of watch time and a ton of views i should do a video on a bunch of video ideas for you guys that'll help you go viral my next tip is to promote your videos as much as possible whether that's through facebook through your other social media. Honestly, joining engagement groups, I'm in a few, it happens. It's how I've met some of the best content creators, the best people, and have made some really great friends through there. Just promoting it to people who genuinely wanna watch your videos is really, really important. I don't recommend doing anything like that, though, like where you solely rely on that because then once you stop using them, you're gonna have an issue. You're not gonna have an audience. You're not gonna have a real audience. You wanna promote your videos as much as possible through all your other platforms. Have your family watch your videos, show all your friends. If you wanna grow on YouTube, you need to treat this like a job. You need to actually dedicate and actually stick to a schedule. Some people might disagree with me. I, I have a friend who thinks that treating it like a job doesn't help at all, that they just do it for fun. If you wanna just do this for fun, sure. But if you really, really wanna see results, you wanna grow, I definitely recommend treating it like a job. Once this was my job, this is how I grew. That's how I grew my Instagram. I have a like schedule, which I could do a day in the life of an influencer if you want to call me that. I don't even know. So you know how I plan my time, how I break up my day, how I film my videos, edit them, like all that stuff. There's so many things that I can do in this series, but once you start taking it seriously, start actually treating it like a job, you're going to see results. Something more recently that has helped a lot of people is shorts. And that's something that I'm new with. I actually posted my first short this week and it's not doing very well, but I've had friends who have way less subscribers than me. I'm talking less than 1K. It helped them push them over 1K because it went viral. So definitely recommend experimenting with shorts. It's something pretty new to me, but honestly, I've been posting shorts every other day. I might post shorts on every day that I don't upload a normal video. The more you post, the more you're gonna be pushed into the algorithm, so it helps you anyway, but shorts don't count towards watch time. I don't know if they count towards views, but I know they don't count towards monetization. But honestly, Honestly, it's such a simple thing for me to do because all I do is take the video I would put for TikTok and put it on YouTube as well as a short. And then the last tip I have is to have fun. It's going to come across in your videos if you are burnt out, if you're stressed over things, if you're not having fun while filming a video. 
it's gonna come across in your videos. What's the point of continuing this if you don't actually enjoy it? But yeah, that completes this video. I really hope you learned something from this. Let me know what videos you wanna see next. I could do how I edit my videos, how I make my thumbnails. I'm gonna do something separate for Instagram. I definitely wanna do how to make money on social media, how to monetize your platforms and things like that. So if you want to see those, then make sure you give this video a thumbs up so I know that you enjoyed it. And please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye. But. All right, you guys, so today's video. I All right, guys, so in today's video, I'm gonna be don't sacrifice your quality over for the. And don't. But yeah, don't sacrifice your.